Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Brett with American Revival Crafts. Is this the best beginner CO2 laser out there? Let's find out. So I can't believe it, but I've had my Monport 80 watt CO2 laser for just over a year now. This was the first CO2 laser that I ever bought. My wife and I started a business using this laser, so I've been using it solid for one year straight. So over this period of time, I've learned a lot about these CO2 lasers. What I want to do today is share some of my experiences with you to help you determine if this is the right machine for you. And who knows, it could possibly be the perfect machine for you. So in this video, I'm going to do my best to give you some insight into what I was thinking when I bought this machine and how my thoughts have evolved over the past year that I've owned it. This is definitely not going to be an all-inclusive video where I show every single feature. There's some of those already out there already. But if you have any specific questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. So I just want to say right from the start that this video is not sponsored in any way whatsoever. I bought this machine about a year ago with my own money. Now, at the time that I did buy the machine, I reached out to Monport. In exchange for making a series of videos, I received a small discount on the machine at that time. But currently, I have no promotional deals going on with Monport. And like all my videos, everything I'm going to be talking about is 100% my true and honest opinion. So a little bit about me. I got into the laser world about two and a half years ago when I first bought an X-Tool D1 10 watt model diode laser. Before I bought this laser, I had no idea how to operate them, no prior experience in any shape or form. I really enjoyed using the X-Tool D1 laser and I learned a lot from it, but I quickly discovered its limitations. It was at this time that I began researching CO2 lasers because I had learned that they were more powerful and faster. It was also during this research that I realized some of the business opportunities that could be had using these machines. It was at that time that I decided to take the plunge into the CO2 world and shortly thereafter we started our business. So after a lot of research, the machine that we decided to go with was the Monport 80 watt CO2 laser with the integrated chiller built into it. So why did I pick this machine specifically? Well, the short answer is budget. As you probably know, these machines cost a lot of money. They did in the past and they still do now. Now they've come down quite a bit over the past few years, but it's still a pretty substantial investment. I knew that being new in the laser engraving and cutting world, it was a really big risk to invest tens of thousands of dollars into a machine if I wasn't even sure that this was something that I was gonna get into. So although this machine is still quite a substantial investment of about four and a half thousand dollars, it's still quite a bit cheaper than a lot of the other units out there. I also really like this machine because of its availability. At the time that I purchased this, I bought it online and it was at my house within a week. Now this is a really popular style of machine. So for that reason, a lot of them are made and there's a pretty large market for them. Now I'll link to all the exact specifications of this particular laser, but the one thing I wanna talk about right now is the power and the speed of this. Me coming from the diode laser world, an 80 watt CO2 laser was a huge jump in power. And with that increase in power, it's also gonna give you an increase in speed. So I went from being able to cut two to three millimeter basswood plywood with my diode laser to now cutting over quarter inch material even faster than the diode laser with my new CO2. For me, that was a huge increase in production. I was also engraving two to three times faster with this machine than I ever did on my diode laser. Now I know a diode laser and a CO2 laser are completely different animals. It's comparing apples to oranges, but I just wanna make this comparison here because it weighed heavily in my decision to end up going with the CO2 laser, just because of how much faster it is at everything. So here's a few examples of some material test cards that I've made in the past. Now, these are really, really important to create anytime you're using a new material. Even though I may give you my settings for how I'm cutting material or how I'm engraving material, each individual laser does have its own differences. So you need to know how your machine is gonna react specifically to material in your specific situation. Another thing I really love about this CO2 laser that I've learned over this past year is that there are a million resources available to learn how to use these and repair these out there on, it, on the internet. Anytime I've had a question or problem operating the machine, a quick Google search has solved almost all of my problems. There is so much out there, not only from the manufacturer, but from user groups and message boards. And so many people have this machine that there are so many different resources out there for you to learn from. 
Going along with that as well is the availability of spare parts and troubleshooting guides. You know, this style of laser has been around for so long and so many people have bought it over the years that there's just a huge array of aftermarket parts and YouTube videos out there to help you solve any situation. Another reason why I like this machine so much is because of the size. I chose to go with the 24 inch by 36 inch bed size and I think it's really perfect, especially to start out with. So it's giving me a large enough work area that I could batch out a, a good amount of projects. I also really like that the chiller is integrated into this machine, so that helps save a lot of space. That's usually a feature that's only available on other higher end models. Now probably one of the larger reasons why I like using this machine is because it runs on Lightburn. Now if you don't know, Lightburn is the standard software used to operate lasers throughout the world and it just has so many great features and it's really easy to use. Now it's pretty standard nowadays for most lasers to be compatible with Lightburn, but even now some CO2 lasers will only run with their own proprietary software. And that could be good or bad, but I love having the option to use Lightburn. So this laser came complete with everything that I needed to get started and up and running right out of the crate. But there were a few things that I changed on it to kind of help with my workflow and to even make it better. So the first of those upgrades that I did was installing an aftermarket air assist system. The machine does come with an air pump out of the box and it works okay, but I found that increasing the airflow during your cutting operations will help you cut a lot better. So the addition of my upgraded air assist was relatively inexpensive. The biggest cost of it is buying an air compressor. So if you already have one of those that you could dedicate to this unit, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. I'll link to a video by Bearded Builds who shows how he installed his air assist onto one of his CO2 lasers. It's by far the best upgrade video that I've found on how to actually do this. And he lists all the parts and makes it really easy to buy everything. Now I really do like this upgraded air assist, not only for the added cutting capability that it gives me, but also just for the convenience of being able to toggle on and off the air assist using light burn. With the stock air assist, the air pumps constantly blowing out of the nozzle, whether or not you have a project running at the time, as long as the machine is on and it's a little loud. So the other upgrade that I've done is changed out the nozzle assembly from stock to a unit from American Photonics. Now there is nothing wrong with the stock nozzle assembly that comes on the unit. I chose to go with this route because it's a lot easier to swap between different focal length lenses and it's also a little bit easier to clean them. So another upgrade that I've done in the machine is I've installed a light burn camera. If you want to see how I installed that, check this link here. This isn't really a necessary upgrade, but it does make things a lot more convenient. Just being able to save material and align your projects quickly makes a big difference and I've enjoyed using it. And the last thing that I've upgraded is my exhaust ventilation system. So the machine comes with a, a fan installed already, but it's really underpowered. It's like a computer fan basically that's on the back of this. So for about 120 bucks, I picked up an AC Infinity inline fan, a six inch fan. So I have that connected to some metal ductwork that goes outside of my roof. And that does a pretty good job of ejecting the smoke. So how has the Mon port held up in the past year? Fantastic. I've had very few issues with this machine. Almost every single one of the issues that I've had with it has been my fault. And also every single issue that I've had with it, I've been easily able to look up a solution online using the various resources that I've already mentioned. Now, I have never had to call or email customer support from Monport. And the biggest complaint that I hear from other users is that it is hard to get a hold of them. So a little of that is to be expected. They're based out of China, and from where I live, they're about 16 hours ahead. So we're on opposite schedules. So when it's daytime here, they're asleep over there. So emailing can be a challenge, sometimes waiting, you know, eight hours or so between emails. But I know that they stand behind these machines, especially if there's an issue with quality control. But also on that topic of customer service, this is a budget machine. And although it would be great to have a US based person that you could talk to, at least during working hours here in the US, you're not really paying for that. Other great laser companies out there like Eon or Thunder have awesome customer support, but you're also paying two, three, four times more for that machine and for that service. So if you're someone like me that's handy and can research these problems and be able to tinker with this a little bit and fix things yourself, there's a huge cost savings that you can achieve by going with this model of unit. During the time that I've owned this laser, I've only had a couple parts go out and they've all been easy fixes. The first thing that happened is one of my proximity sensors went out. The second thing that happened was my autofocus probe wire somehow got nicked and shorted out. So to solve that problem, I just removed my autofocus probe. So now I have an additional CO2 laser in my shop and also another diode laser that I use in my business. 
But for a while, this was the only laser that we were using. So it was extremely important that it was constantly up. So one thing that I did to make sure that I was always running is I made sure to buy some spare parts. I have a spare laser tube, spare proximity sensors, a spare power supply on hand just in case anything goes out because if something does happen to some of those items it's going to be probably a, at least a week to get those delivered it's not stuff that you could just run out to the store and get usually another thing i want to mention about the montport laser and really all of this class of laser in general is that they are going to take some time to set up and calibrate you might get lucky and out of the box everything's going to be aligned perfectly but probably it's not going to be just from shipping and just the manufacturing process so the biggest thing that you need to do, and I cannot stress this enough, is to make sure that the mirrors are aligned. I'm gonna to link to a great video on Montport's website that tells you how to exactly to align the mirrors. It's really an easy process. It's just a little finicky at first when you first learn how to do it. It takes a little bit of time. And that by far was the biggest frustration that I had with this being a new user and expecting it to cut right out of the box perfectly. But like all lasers, the mirrors need to be perfectly aligned to get the best performance. And also I cannot stress enough the importance of maintenance. So the maintenance schedule is gonna vary depending on how much you use this machine. But for me personally, using this every day, I maintain it every single day. That maintenance process is not very complicated, but if you do not maintain a strict regimen of maintenance, problems will compound at the machine and that's when you're gonna get downtime. So I have a whole video about how I maintain this machine if you want to check it out right here. But basically it involves cleaning the lens, cleaning the mirrors, checking alignment on the mirrors and overall maintaining the cleanliness of the machine. For me using it every day, as long as I take five or 10 minutes at the end or beginning of my day to take care of those things, everything's running perfectly. You know, I just wanna say that no matter what laser you do go with, None of them are magic boxes that are just gonna spit out products with the press of a button. They all take testing, they all take planning, they all take failures. You know, anytime you're coming out with something new, it, you have to go through that process to get things right. So is this the best starter CO2 laser? Well, it depends. For me, yes, 100%. I love this machine. I'm so glad that I bought it. It has opened a lot of doors for me and it has performed beyond my expectation. But you may be in a different position than I'm in. So the answer to that question is gonna depend because everyone's situation is different. Is this the perfect laser? No. Does the perfect laser even really exist? I'm not sure. What I do know is this machine is an excellent value. And for me, it did exactly what it said it was gonna do. Having this machine has jump-started our business and we could not do what we can do without this. So there you have it. What do you think? Is this the best laser machine for you? I don't know. You tell me. All I can say again is that I really enjoyed using it. I'm going to continue to enjoy using it. It's going to have a spot in my shop for as long as it's alive. But what do you think? You got a question? Got a comment? Leave it down below. Let's continue the conversation. I am by no means an expert. I've had this machine for a year. This is my first CO2 laser. But I do want to tell you that a lot has changed in a year even for me. So if you're just thinking about getting into this, there's a lot to learn, but there's so many resources out there for you to, to help you learn that it's totally attainable. Thank you for a great 2023. At the time that I'm recording this, it's almost Christmas time. So uh, we've had just a fantastic year, a lot of growth. We're almost to 2000 subscribers now. So thank you very much for that. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for our future content because we have so much planned for 2024. It's gonna be awesome. New laser projects, laser reviews, CNC projects, giveaways, lives, all sorts of stuff going on. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, check out this playlist up here. This is a bunch of videos that I made regarding the same unit. So tons of information, a lot more information that I covered in this video. So be sure to check those out. All right, Merry Christmas. We'll see you next year.